is something very unusual about this automobile graveyard. For all the crumpled fenders, the broken glass, and twisted metal, not one human being was injured in the crashes that destroyed these cars. You see, this auto graveyard is located in the Ford Motor Company testing ground in Dearborn, Michigan, and the cars were wrecked on purpose. The cars are part of Ford's crash testing program. On the average, we smash 35 cars a month. Some of these tests help determine ways to make cars safer in accidents you might get into. And while no humans have been hurt in these cars, quite a few dummies like this one have been shaken up. We are using the dummies to show you how unrestrained or non-safety belted human beings probably would react in different kinds of accident situations. The dummies also show how people wearing safety belts would probably react. Ford has been conducting crash tests with dummies since the 1950s. The results of those early tests led to an industry first, the introduction of factory installed safety belts in 1955. Crash tests also graphically illustrate the difference lap belts and shoulder harnesses make even in low speed collisions. We thought you might benefit from seeing some film of the different tests we run. This first scene is of unbelted occupants in a car traveling 14 miles an hour. You'll notice here that the front seat passengers knees go into the instrument panel with some force and the head strikes and breaks the windshield. For the series of crashes you will see, most of the cars we chose are small. We did this to illustrate that in small cars, safety belts indeed are effective in helping to keep a person from injury. Also, more people are driving small cars these days. In this next crash, we have unbelted occupants, 30 degrees to the barrier, but at 22 miles per hour this time. First, we will see it at normal full speed. Incidentally, the chicken wire effect you see along the side of the car is to keep the dummies from falling out of the passenger compartment. The red and blue chamois material on the face and knees with paint on it is used to indicate where the dummy hits. It smears as it hits, so our test personnel can better identify where the impact points are. This is the classic crash into the windshield with the head striking the glass. The steering column is collapsible. It is designed to absorb some of the shock of the crash and thereby lessen the impact on the dummy's chest. Next we have unbelted occupants at 31 miles an hour. Watch the heads and necks in this situation. This type of impact can result in a broken neck. In this crash test, we have back seat passengers. One of them is restrained and the other isn't, to give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the difference seat belts can make. The left rear seat passenger does the classic deep bow but his head doesn't hit any part of the car, nor does his body. But his friend to the right is flying all over the place. This crash illustrates why it is just as important for the back seat occupants, as well as those in the front seat, to use their belts. When the dummy in the back seat is thrown forward, he compounds the injuries of the front seat occupants. This next scene shows what happens to belted occupants in a crash. The first crash is at 30 miles per hour, 30 degrees to the barrier. You'll notice that the occupants move forward, but are restrained by the safety belts, which catch under impact. This next crash is a station wagon hitting the barrier at 31 miles per hour. This scene shows the crumpling of the front left portion at impact. It demonstrates good design because the car itself takes up much of the energy of the crash, therefore not transmitting all the energy to the occupants. Now at the same speed and angle as the previous crash, we have a small car with restrained occupants. 
One of the important advantages of safety belts is that they give the driver a better chance of controlling his car after an accident. If the driver is not restrained, he could lose control of the car and cause more damage and injuries after the first collision. This next crash is a rear end collision. You'll notice that the impact on the restraint occupants is not quite as severe at 31 miles per hour as it was in the front barrier crashes at that speed. This is because the car in front is absorbing some of the shock, but the occupants still bow forward, the safety belts preventing them from going into the windshield and instrument panel. This final crash is for all those people who say they'd rather be thrown free of the car in a crash rather than remain in it. As the car continues its rollover, the passenger is catapulted completely out of the picture. He eventually came to a stop more than 150 feet from the car. A shot from inside the car during the rollover reveals that the driver's body helped nudge the front passenger out the window. The passengers in back are also getting tossed about. Needless to say, belts would have helped here. Some governments have realized the importance of safety belts to the extent they passed laws requiring their use. In Australia, after just such a law was passed, a Melbourne hospital found it no longer needed to keep a plastic surgeon on duty to provide prompt treatment for car accident victims. There simply weren't enough injury victims. Another Australian hospital reports that it treated 56 serious eye injuries in four years, and all but one of them happened before the safety belt law went into effect. Well, these type of dramatic results are not unique. They've occurred in many of the 22 countries and provinces that have passed safety belt use laws. About 28,000 car occupants die in traffic accidents in the United States every year. Evidence shows that more than half of those deaths could have been prevented by the use of seat belts. And the possibility of serious injury could have been reduced by 57%. So please, don't be a dummy. Use your lap and shoulder belts. After all, all our testing isn't going to do much good unless you buckle up.